Welcome to this video snippet on aphasias. When we are talking about aphasias, it is important to understand that we are not talking about speech problems, but language as a whole. Learning about language or understanding problems which can affect language is extremely important for any clinician because it definitely gives cues about lateralization of the brain and also to understand localization of various lesions. While studying lateralization, it's extremely important to understand there are some old techniques like VADA technique, wherein amobarbital infusion was given on both the sides of the keratins. By this technique, what would happen is if the language was dominant on the left side of the brain, when amobarbital infusion is given on the left side, it would cause language disruption along with the contralateral flaccid paralysis which would make the experimenter understand that this person's language centers are predominantly lateralized on the left side of the brain. There is another similar technique called dichotic listening. Dichotic listening is another technique by which lateralization is understood better. Vowels or consonants are used as stimuli and it is bilaterally administered to the individual. Thereby, you are looking at the subject's preference of side through which he hears better. This would give the side of dominance of language. For example, in an individual with left brain lateralization for language, you would prefer to hear or you would hear better in the left side of the ear compared to the right side of the ear. Of course, there are newer techniques like fMRIs, PET scans, which helps a lot in lateralization. When we are talking about lateralization, it's also important to understand about right-handedness and left-handedness. We all know majority of the people are right-handed. And if you take up about right-handed people, in right-handed people, about 92% of them have left brain dominance. It's only a small percentage of 6% of them having right brain dominance, whereas 2% of them might have bilateral equal representation or similar representation. Coming on to the left-handed people or ambidextrous people, you would see the left side of the brain being 70% dominant. Right side of the brain is little more higher to 15% compared to the 6% in right-handed. The bilateral representation is also higher and about 15% is what we need to remember. It is also interesting to remember there are more males who are left-handed. Another interesting point is to remember about pathological left-handedness. By the way, what is pathological left-handedness? In children less than 10 to 11 years of age, if they have early left brain damage. It typically happens that these children who might have traditionally been right-handed would actually start using more of their left hand and start acquiring more of left-handedness. This is called as pathological left-handedness. And why do they acquire that? It is because of the early insult to the left side of the brain which leads to the pathological left-handedness.